Memtech, and in this episode of EFI Explained, we're going to be covering these. The crankshaft position sensor. So, what are they? Well, this is a Ford ZTEC Variable Reluctance, or VR, crank position sensor. It's used to telling the engine management system the position of the crankshaft so it can time things like the ignition firing, it can time the injection of the fuel, and also work out the RPM of the engine. So how do they work? Well, the sensor at its simplest is nothing more than a coil surrounding a ferrite core. And if we draw a diagram, it looks like this. So here is the, the ferrite core within the sensor. And there are the two pins that go to the plug, and the coil of copper wire, a very fine coil of copper wire, wrapped around the, the iron centre. So what happens is on the back of the flywheel, or on the front trigger pulley, which might look something like this, you'll have some teeth that spin round, driven by the crank, that pass the end of the sensor. Like this. And as this wheel rotates, what happens is the sensor generates a voltage uh, in relation to the teeth flying by. So as the tooth flies by, you get a waveform of time and volts. And this is showing the teeth passing the sensor. So what is their use in EFI? Well, as I've explained, the engine management system uses them to determine the position of the engine and also the speed of the engine. And it uses information to work out the firing time for the injectors as well as the coils to make sure that the fuel is fired at the right time, perhaps on an open, open intake valve, and also that the ignition takes place at the right time or the right angle before top dead centre to maximise the torque output of the so engine. Test them. Well, they're quite easy to test. All you need to do is crank the engine over on the starter motor, and measuring an AC voltage on your multimeter from these two pins here, you should see approximately 2 to 10 volts as the engine is spinning over. If you don't see this, then chances are the sensor is faulty. One thing we've noticed with aftermarket installations of these sensors, with trigger wheels, is because of the tight tolerance they need to be away, roughly a sheet of paper, if this wheel is not centralised, what can happen is the tip can be worn through and actually damage the core inside. So that's one thing to check on an aftermarket installation, is that the tolerance is either not too far away, or indeed not too close, that some run out on the trigger wheel has caused damage to the sensor. So what to watch out for when using and installing crank sensors? Well, the most important thing is electrical noise. The ECU itself is looking at this waveform, and although most ECUs will have complex differential comparators, as well as advanced noise filtering and time-based rejection, there is the, there's the chance that noise spikes from the ignition system, the alternator, or a poor earth or ground loop can cause the ECU to false trigger and think it sees a tooth that isn't there on the trigger wheel. And this can cause all sorts of timing errors and synchronisation losses on the engine management system. Although most ECUs will report a synchronisation loss if it occurs. OK, so some more technical EFI info for you regarding these sensors. Well, as I've said, the ECU will generally be looking at the sensor relating to the trigger wheel and seeing this pattern coming into the ECU. So that's all well and good on a trigger wheel, you might say. But one thing to notice on this trigger wheel is the missing tooth. Now what this means is the ECU sees this constant waveform coming in, this constant pattern. But every now and then, or in this example of a 36 minus 1 trigger wheel, every 36 tooth will be missing. So what will happen is you'll have a waveform, and then a longer gap, and then the waveform will continue. When the ECU will measure the time between these peaks or troughs, depending on how the ECU is configured, and for example at a certain RPM, this time might be one millisecond. And from that it can work out the RPM. Because obviously 36 teeth, 36 milliseconds in total, therefore it can say 60, uh, sorry, 1 second divided by 36 milliseconds times by 60 gives you your RPM. But what it will also be looking out for is this extra long gap. And when it finds this 2 millisecond gap, in your, or the, twice the gap of the standard tooth size that it's picking up, it will then realise it's at a certain angle called its offset angle. And this usually, on, for example, a Ford ZTEC, will be 90 degrees before top dead centre. Well, that is, the gap passes the sensor 90 degrees before the engine reaches TDC. Now, on most engine management systems, you can change or alter this offset angle to suit the trigger wheel. So, for example, Vauxhall and Bosch-based engines that use the GM60-2 pattern usually have an offset of 112 degrees, 
Whereas I've said the Ford ZTEC or any four cylinder Ford engine that used EDIS would have an offset angle of 90 degrees. But of course, if you're fitting an aftermarket trigger wheel to your front pulley, it's important to either A, make sure it lines up perfectly to the correct angle that the engine management system specifies. For example, a mega jolt system requires you have exactly 90 degrees before top dead center because it uses a Ford EDIS module. Or B, you have an aftermarket management system which you can adjust this offset angle, like for example our Nodis system or any other more advanced ECU. There are other types of crank sensors used on engines, such as horn effects or opto sensors, although these are becoming more and more rare now as variable reluctance is the preferred method for accurate cam and crank angle tracking. And that's all there is for this video on crank angle sensors. Stay tuned and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos, guides and blogs about the automotive industry, EFI, tuning and general mapping, fabrication and installation principles. Thanks for watching.